Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Curly and Yarny. I am Milena and in today's video we will be giving the final touches to those two dish towels as we are going to hem them. So let's get started! So not so long ago I did a sewing video about the sewing of dish towels again but those were the dish towels in my stash Boston project and during this video I made a confession and the confession was that I'm not very good at sewing I'm still very very beginner in this area so uh, in the first video I explained to you what I did to uh, sew uh, the hem of those towels and I also <laughs> asked people uh, any recommendation or any tips they could give me to improve my sewing skills and I mean the response I was very positive I got a lot of feedback so thank you all everyone who took the time to write me a tip and to write me a feedback so today I uh, assembled all of those tips and I'm going to sew those two dish towels with the help of those tips so I would recommend watching this first video be before watching today's video because uh, I think it would make uh, the content of this video even more um, valuable since I'm kind of a uh, taking where I left off on the other video and improving my methods from there. So don't worry if you've missed this video, I will link it in the description down below. So here are the towels that we are going to work on today. So uh, I've already made two videos about them. So I have a whole video about the warping method that I use uh, for them. So it was a method in which I doubled the threads in my head all. And I also have a whole other video about the weaving of uh, the towels. So I will also link them in the description down below if you're curious to see them. So now the towels, they are completely woven. I have taken them off the loom and I have wet finished them. So. Um, the next step is to hem them. So I just want to uh, show you what I did to secure uh, the ends in between those steps. So at the beginning and at the end, so uh, where the warp is attached to the loom at the front and the back apron, I have simply uh, cut the fringes and made little overhand knots. So I made them here and here. So this uh, was secure enough in order to uh, go through uh, the whole step of wet finishing. Also, in between the two towels while I was weaving them, I wove a few rows of scrap yarn. So um, those, I think there's only five or six uh, rows of scrap yarn. So this is really just so that I would know when one towel is finished and when the other one starts while doing the step here today of hemming. So now we can start uh, sewing the uh, towels and there's a few things that we can do. Um, so usually what I used to do, I used to go to my parents' place because my mom has a very nice uh, sewing studio and there she has a serger. So with the help of a serger, I uh, serge the both ends of the towel and with this it kind of secures the threads and uh, keep them from unraveling. So from them my threads are secure and it's very uh, reassuring to start the sewing process but today i cannot do that because uh, for two reasons first of all i now live three hours away from their home and second of all there is a massive massive snowstorm outside so it is windy it is snowy and there is a freezing rain so the only thing we can do today is simply stay home and do some crafting <laughs> so this leads me though to my uh, second point so uh, in my last video what i did instead of surging the ends i uh, simply uh, cut the nuts and I cut the scrap yarn and from there I uh, started doing the hem and uh, sewing. But many of you in the comments uh, actually suggested to me that I could kind of replicate a little bit the idea of a serge. So many of you suggest that I could uh, make a zigzag uh, hem here at the uh, border of the towel and then cut them and this zigzag would actually help for unraveling. So this is what we're going to do first. So I'm going to make four zigzag stitch. So one here at the beginning, two here for both towels and then one more at the end. So let's just jump to the sewing machine and start with this.
I don't know how much it shows on the camera, but uh, here we have the zigzag stitch on all ends of the two towels. So this should help secure my threads for now. So this, I don't think one line of zigzag would be enough to secure them forever. But here, since I'm going to fold the hem twice, only one line, only one line will suffice. And now we can uh, start with this, uh, with simply cutting. I need to uh, cut all ends here. So first of all, here I want to cut the knot, and I want to cut very closely to um, a little bit before where I did my zigzag stitch. And now I'm going to uh, cut all of the loose ends that are hanging. I usually do it at the end, but now I find them in my way. So I'm going to cut them all already. So I have used those uh, towels in my video about changing colors. And uh, during the video, I showed you a method of changing colors that look quite visible on the loom. So I wanted to show you how invisible it is uh, now on the towel. So uh, right off the back here and here, I made some transition. So let me just zoom in so that you can see how it looks now. So here we have two places where we change colors. We have one here and one here. And so if I cut the little ends that are sticking out. So we see it, it's a little bulky in there, but when we, take a, the, when we look at the towel as a whole, we don't really see it. So here's also another place that we change colors and once the sweat's finished and the ends are cut, we almost don't see it. So now the towels have been ironed. I have cut all of the uh, little uh, pieces that were hanging there. So uh, now I will start doing the hem. Um, so uh, there's a few tricks I received for this part. Uh, so the first trick, uh, I did actually receive it from my mom this time. So uh, I used this little uh, gauge when I was doing uh, the hem last time. So I was using this little gauge to, um, to help me fold the hem in a way that it would all be the same width all the way through. Uh, so I think it works well for that. I think my hem was pretty even on that aspect, but uh, my mom told me, she told me, you know what, you don't really need that. You just need to trust yourself. I'm pretty sure you can make an even edge without that. So today I will try to listen to her and try to trust myself and not use it as much. I think that without using this, I might, have, I might be able to uh, do it a bit quicker, but if not, I'm gonna go back and use it again. The other trick I received was according to uh, the use of uh, those little pins there. And many people told me that there is a way to uh, pin them that would be easier. So I'm going to show you what I used to do and I'm going to show you uh, what they told me would be better. And I'll try to uh, get on this new habit of, use them, of using them the better way. So let's start this. So what I did in the other video with my hem, I actually folded once, then I pinned it this way. And by this way, I mean that the head of my safety pin would be uh, laying on my hand woven piece. So it would be really facing towards my hand woven piece. Then once I had put pins all the way through the piece. So let's do a second one just for example. Then I would take it off and then I would take the hand and fold it for a second time and then pin it again. So there was a lot of manipulation there. So Here's the, trick that the, here's the tip that I received that I think is just genius. I don't know why <laughs> it never crossed my mind. The suggestions I had was that I would still fold the hem once like this. Then I could take the safety pin, but in, I would put the head this time facing towards the hem or off of the woven piece like this. So then when I, have, when I want to uh, do my uh, second fold of the hem, it just works magically. I just fold it. And my pin just goes in place exactly where it belongs, so it pins again and I don't have to take it off and put it back in again, it's just perfectly where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. 
and now I'm going to give you another tip that I received. So uh, on my other video, I had this problem where I had a lot of my um, ends sticking out. So I had those um, little corners sticking out on one side. So what again somebody suggested was that I actually fold it at a 45 degree angle like this and then I can start folding for the M like that and this should help uh, with the sticking out of uh, the corner at the end so I'm going to try this at the same time. So now I have done the whole width of the towel, so I am going to iron it. So I'm going to uh, roll the hem over to do the second fold and we're gonna see the magic happen of those amazing safety pin tricks, so let's do it! So it's my first time trying it and I see that if my safety pin is sticking out too much like this, it's kind of harder to uh, pin it in. So I try to have the pointy part not uh, sticking out so much. So uh, there are a few things that I would like to point out. First of all, not the trick about the little corner sticking it out. So when I was doing the first fold, we could sit quite a lot, but once it's been folded a second time, it's actually pretty invisible. So I'm excited to see how it's going to look after I have done a DM, uh, I have done the machine hem. Also, uh, for the size of the hem, I'm going for something a little less than one inch, but again, I didn't use my gauge. So I'm doing it pretty much eyeballing. So uh, now uh, this is all well and secure. So uh, we can jump to uh, the sewing machine and we can start sewing this. All right, so uh, we now have one hem done. And um, so the corner here, amazing. This corner here still needs a bit of work. So I still believe I still need to do a lot of practice before being able to uh, master those new techniques. There's another part of my, uh, my uh, sewing that I want to uh, draw your attention to and it is the part here where I have a difference in stripe in my pattern. So I have a difficult time. I'm having a hard time uh, making those uh, line align with my hem and with my project so they are always a little bit screwed or a little bit shifted uh, so this is something i'm trying to work on but i'm don't exactly know where to start i received a few suggestions that if i change the foot on my sewing machine maybe this would help so i have been suggested suggested using a walking foot so uh, i think it's something I'm gonna look into, see what's available for uh, my sewing machine. So I have quite an older model, so I don't know exactly uh, if those will be available, but at the same time, my sewing machine is still in a, the company that made my sewing machine is still in business. So I think I have a good chance of finding something that would work. So that's something I'm gonna have to look uh, into for uh, later on. So uh, for now, I'm just trying to improve them while <laughs> sewing normally, So, I, but I'm still not quite there. There's also other suggestion that I received for that. Uh, so I know that in quilting there exist different methods and different uh, tools to help uh, keep pieces in place. So I know my mom uses glue and uh, she glues uh, uh, some of the fabric together and when she watches the glue just uh, uh, fade away in the water so the glue doesn't stay but the piece were uh, closer together so it was easier to work with. Somebody also suggested that I use a fusible tape so I think it does a little bit um, a similar effect for that. So so I uh, get, didn't get the chance to get my hand on I, uh, to get my hand on either of those two, but that's something I'm gonna look also into. Maybe this will be more accessible than a, than a new foot on my sewing machine. We'll see. <laughs> now with this first hem done, I am ready to uh, jump on the other hems that I have to do. So I will do them in batch. So I will start by uh, pinning them all in, and then I, I will do uh, the whole uh, sewing. So let's just get started.
So a uh, welcome back and now we have finished uh, sewing both towels so let's just take a little look at them. So here's the first towel. So here it is. I like how uh, from uh, far away it kind of looks like a gradient effect so on both uh, edges it is a little bit um, it looks a little bit lighter and then with the green and the teal in the middle it looks a little darker and with the line in the very center of the towel of purple it looks much darker so I really really like how it turned out and then we have uh, the second one so the one where I just had fun uh, with different thickness of stripes so I did smaller stripes of white and uh, stripes of all colors every now and then so I also very very much enjoy how uh, it turned out I also like how different they actually look even though they are both uh, woven with the exact same yarn they both give a very different feeling so and um, this one is like very subtle very simple and this one is just very funky <laughs> so <laughs> there we have them um, so I definitely feel that the tips I tried today helped me improve uh, my sewing skill on this but again I still feel like I need to uh, sew a lot more to uh, get more comfortable with the whole process but this I think this is just a good news this means I have way more weaving ahead of me <laughs> and talking about that I want to uh, introduce you to my next weaving project so I don't know if it's gonna be out next week or the week after but my next project is a baby blanket and let me show you what I'm going to do I'm going to use those yarns from Lion Brand, so they are part of their uh, Tribu, Tru, Tribu. I don't know. I don't know how to say this, but uh, it's a T R U B O O. <laughs> the tri the Tribu uh, collection. So this is 100% bamboo, and I have them in three colors, which are slate, mauve and silver and uh, I'm going to make an effect with the colors but mostly I'm going to make an effect with pickup sticks so I have an, I an idea in my mind of making uh, some pickup stick texture only in some parts of the pattern so stay tuned to see how this is going to turn out so uh, this is it for today's video uh, if you have other sewing tips for me I would be very happy to read them so please leave a comment down below and I hope to see you soon bye bye